Brunei really is. Every cup of coffee you buy in any of his restaurants go towards his belief system. That's all. Next case. So here's the question. Since we're all in such a loving spirit around the holidays, do you think that Apple, Microsoft, and Google, and the other Internet giants pay their fair share of taxes? I don't. And in fact, I've been hammering this point for two books now. And strangely enough, Charlie Rose interviewed Apple CEO Tim Cook, who was as slithery a snake as Obama. Tim Cook tries to slither out of the tax avoidance of Apple. He's as good at it as uh, Barack Obama at his job, which is called spinning the truth. The plain fact is, despite all the rhetoric coming from the communists and the Democrat Party, including the, the ones who are running for the office of the presidency, you know and I know that the major corporations like Apple don't pay their fair share. Oh, they pay what they have to pay, but they rig the tax code as far as I'm concerned. They say, oh, it's the tax code. They wrote the tax code. In fact, the last I checked, talking about Microsoft now, and I could be mistaken, Microsoft hired over 1,000 former IRS officers to rewrite their own tax laws so they would pay as little as possible. You say, well, it's just business. No, it's not just business. It's monkey business. And so, then, so we're talking about the, the, the big corporations who've never had it so good. See, this is how it works. You don't understand this. What you people don't understand is that if you study... If you study the history of tyrannies, which I've done all of my life since I'm 18 years old, I've been fascinated by tyrannies. How do you think Hitler rose to power out of being an obscure bum in the streets with a bunch of perverted thugs who beat everyone up? How do you think he rose to take over Germany? You would say the industrialists would have stopped him. Yeah, they would have stopped him if he wasn't good for them. But he was very smart. He cultivated, for example... The Krupps, who ran the Krupp Steel f f uh, Company, builders of the armaments in Germany, and, of, and the ovens who baked the Jews. And the Krupps backed him to the hilt. So did all of the major corporations in Germany. He was very smart to have cultivated the major corporations of Germany so they wouldn't oppose him. So he made favors, favorite deals with them, way along every step of the way. So now we have an interview with Apple CEO Tim Cook. And I'm making a big leap here. I'm making a cultural leap for those of you who want it and can follow the bouncing ball. What am I saying to you? Why is it we don't hear a peep from Tim Cook of Apple or the great sweater wearer of Microsoft who has the best PR team in the world, makes you all think he's such a kindly, nice man? Why don't they say a word? They have good deals. They don't pay 39% tax like any corporation would, you know, less expenses. They're not paying 39%. They do uh, all sorts of deals. I think one is called the Triple Irish, which Microsoft is famous for. Billions, hundreds of billions of dollars kept offshore so they don't have to pay American taxes, even though, U even though they are a U.S.-based company, even though their companies were built here based on American technology created by government money. Think about what I just said to you. What do you think, uh, this, this thing with the undershirt? Zuckerberg is such a genius? I'm sure he has genius in him. But Zuckerberg didn't invent the Internet any more than Al Gore did. Zuckerberg was a buccaneer who knew how to use the Internet. He came up with an app. Basically, it's an app. A Schmendrick with an app at Harvard. That's what he is. A Schmendrick with an app. The Schmendrick from Harvard has an app. The Schmendrick didn't create the Internet. The Schmendrick created an app, so he made a lot of money. But the Schmendrick cultivates Mao Tse Obama. So Schmendrick gets favors from Mao Obama. This is how it works. And that's how it worked in Germany. That's how it works in America. They could care less what he does to the country. Well, we're talking about uh, the Cultural Revolution that is being conducted upon America by Barack Fang Obama. The Fang is on vacation right now, and the Fang is resting for a while before he comes back to bite the apple again. And the Fang won't be happy until this country of ours resembles that of communist China and Mao Zedong, in a minor form, of course. And whether you can survive the Cultural Revolution is a question of whether you can and what do I mean by the Cultural Revolution? It's everything I talk about every day. Flooding America with cultures that are not only incapable of assimilating into this culture, 
but the opposite of that. They want to destroy this culture. They want to convert the culture. Do I have to spell out the name Islam? Islam is not compatible with the West. Islam has been at war with everyone for 1,400 years, no matter what Hillary Clinton may protesteth about it. The religion itself is a religion of conversion. The cultural revolution that China went through is what Obama is trying to conduct upon this country in a far more stealthy manner. The cultural revolution occurs uh, on all levels. The universities have become... I, do I have a word for the single word of what they've done to the universities? Take a look at what these Black Lives Matter radicals have done to the campuses. Shouting down professors, white professors at that, who won't cater to them. Do you see what I'm talking about? Those are the red guards of today. The movies, pollution, garbage, filth, undermining the family, undermining era, faith, everything you can believe in. That's the cultural revolution. They make a good buck at it, too. Oh, yeah. Big dollar in, in, in the, in the counterculture. Big dollar in the anti-hero business. All the great anti-heroes. So, the cultural revolution. Can you survive it? You know, I have two books I'm reading. One is Jung Chang's book, The Unknown Story of Mao. It's an older book. Light reading. It's 570, uh, 775 pages. I'm taking them for the holidays. The other is by another woman, Nian Chang, Life and Death in Shanghai. Another shorty a 500-pager, and in this book, she conveys the horrors faced by one brave Chinese woman during the Cultural Revolution. That's the Communist Revolution. The Communist Revolution, she describes what they did to the people. From a China ravaged by persecution comes this remarkable and gripping testimony. You don't understand what Obama's doing. We have a society that is persecuting the Christian white male of the heterosexual variety on an almost daily basis, whether it be in the military or any other aspect of America. I don't have to spell it out for you. If you doubt me, then read Government Zero and check out the references. Ask any military man what's going on inside the military. That's part of the Cultural Revolution. You see it's going on at such a slow pace, you don't even see it happening. And if you study the history of the, of the Communist Chinese Cultural Revolution including the rise and fall of the Red Guards, you will see that Barack Obama is a mini Mao. He's getting away with everything he possibly can and then some, given the constraints that the geniuses called the Founding Fathers placed upon this monster! Monster! Resting up his fangs, sharpening the fangs in Hawaii for the next bite of the apple. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or Swiss America. Took me down the microphone tube, and here I am on talk radio, emerging in the year of our Lord 2015, the date being the 22nd of December. Glad to tell you that uh, Tahoe has just gotten uh, 6.4 billion gallons of water in only 24 hours. Not a word from Jerry Brown about the drought. Oh, sure, it's not over yet. More than 6 billion gallons of water have poured into Lake Tahoe in less than two days. Since midnight Monday, the lake has gone up almost two inches, the equivalent of 6.39 billion gallons of water. And that's because winter storms are slamming the West Coast, hitting the Sierra, bringing several feet of snow. And uh, you on the East Coast are suffering from or enjoying extra hot weather, but it's not going to last too much longer. These storms are going to hit you probably in three days, as is the case with weather, which comes out of the West because of the rotation of the Earth. But the point being, how long have I told you on this show, all during the scare about the global warming and the drought and the world's coming to an end, how many years did I, Michael Savage, a New Yorker, have to tell you idiot Californians that this is a Mediterranean climate? Many of you idiots grew up here. You don't even know that it's a Mediterranean climate. And Mediterranean climate is very clear. I told you the rains would come back. I'm not a soothsayer. I don't have a, a crystal ball. Study the history of weather. Drought, then rain. Drought, then rain. Drought, then rain. Arid, then wet. Arid, then wet. Arid, then wet. So now we're coming back into the wet cycle. And, then, of course, the folks in the weather business will tell you there's too much water. Right already, we're getting reports already of sandbags in San Francisco. Now they're complaining about water. 
First there was no water, now there's too much water. And of course they'll all say it's owing to the global warming. Uh, whatever happens is global warming in order to keep selling you the bill of goods. If you want the truth on the matter, my chapter on zero science in Government Zero is perhaps one of the most concise discussions of the subject with great references. There are other great sources for this material if you care to study it, but I've I've been told by a friend who um, he has a lady friend who's a liberal who he considers to be, I don't know what he can. I don't know why he's with her. He said her mind is made up. She won't read the book. She won't listen to facts. She won't discuss the issues with him. She just knows she's right. I said, that's called an ignoramus. He said, but she's very good looking. I said, she's still an ignoramus. But she comes from a fine family. I said, she's still an ignoramus. He said, I guess you're right. She's just a communist.